Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're creating a sphere that is a three-dimensional sphere with little bubbles on it and we're going to do that with the new 3D tools in Adobe Illustrator. These were added to Adobe Illustrator in April 2022. So we're going to start with a brand new document, choosing File New. Now to reduce the overhead on your machine with these new tools, you will probably want to be working on quite small documents. Mine is a 1920 by 1080 ratio, but it is just 480 by 270 pixels. We're going to need to render this at a high quality, so the smaller that you start off with, the less pressure it's going to be on your computer. I'm going to start with a circle, so I'm just holding down the shift key as I drag out an ellipse. I'm going to select the direct selection tool here, select over this anchor point here and just press delete to delete it. I want this to have a fill, but I don't want it to have any stroke at all. And for my fill, I'm going to use a sort of pink color. We're going to use this half circle to create our circle and for this we're going to use the 3D tool so you would go to window and then 3D and materials. These are the new tools in Adobe Illustrator. You want to be using the selection tool on your shape just make sure that you have the shape selected. Let's go to object we're going to use revolve and we're going to revolve from the right edge in this case so that we get our sphere. I'm going to use off axis front. I will come in here and set up my shadows because I do want a shadow on my object. I'm going to have it below my object. I'm going to increase the softness so it is a soft shadow and I'm going to increase the shadow bounds because I want as much of the shadow as is possible. Shadows get cut off quite a lot in this new 3D tool in Adobe Illustrator so just be aware of that. I'm going to come up to the top here and I'm going to settle on a lighting direction. This is pretty important because we're going to create the dots for this shape as a 3D object as well. And we need to have the lighting coming the same direction on the circle as it does on those shapes in a minute. So settle on where you want your lighting to come from. I'm choosing top left. I'm going to click here on render with ray tracing just to do a preliminary render. If you're looking at your shape at this time, you'll notice it has very pixelated edges. We'll deal with that in just a minute. But for now, we need to create our material. And for that, we're going back to the circle tool. I'm just going to drag out this time a really small circle because this is going to be the object that we place on our circle. So these are going to be our little bumps, if you like. I'm going to choose a color that is in the sort of turquoise green area. This shape doesn't have a stroke, it just has a fill. With it selected, I'm going to select again these 3D and materials panel. This time I'm going to choose inflate because that's just going to blow it up. I'm going to bring the depth back to zero. I just want to inflate one side of this object and I want it to be face on. So that's really important because if you start turning it around, you're going to get things that look a bit weird on it. So I'm just going to choose front. I'm going to lighting and I'm going to light this from the top left. The exact same lighting direction as I used for this shape here. Again, really important. Now if I want this to have a gloss on it, I'm going to come into materials. I'm going to come down here to base properties. Just make sure you open up your base properties area. And under roughness, you're just going to drag that all the way to zero. And that will put a shine on this shape. Right now, no shine on anything. We need to render it. So I'm just going to click here to render it. So now I have the first of my dots. I'm going to select it and choose object and then repeat and grid. Then I'll choose object, repeat, and I'm going to options because I want to select this grid type. So we've got a sort of offset grid. I'll click OK. And I'm just going to drag out to create a sort of largish size block of dots because these are ultimately going onto this shape. With this pattern object selected, I'm going to the symbols panel. You can get to yours by choosing window and then symbols. I'm going to click the plus sign here and click OK. It's just important that this is a symbol because that's the way that you can create it as a material on your shape. I'm going to delete that from my document. I don't need it any longer. I'm going back with the selection tool, selecting on my shape. I'm going back to my 3D and materials. 
I'm going to the Materials panel, I'm going to select Graphics, and here is where we get access to the current set of symbols, and at the bottom of the Symbols panel is our new symbol. And we can just click to add it to our shape. Now I can scale it up so it is a bit larger, so it's going to fill the shape a bit better. And here's where it's really important that we use the lighting coming from the right direction. It's not a perfect result, but it is probably as good as you're going to get just using these basic tools. I'm happy with that now. I'm going to click away from it. The only thing I'm not happy with is that I would like this object to be lit a bit better and obviously the resolution of it is really appalling right now. So let's go to lighting. I'm going to increase the intensity of the lighting. I'm going to increase the rotation a little bit. That's looking a bit better. Once I'm happy with where everything's going here with the lighting and the object itself, I'm going to drop this little icon down this little disclosure triangle and I'm going to set high as the quality and then I'm also going to set the raster settings for this document to high so I'm going to click on this and choose resolution high and click OK and then we'll render it so I'll just click here on render and at this point that you'll be glad that you chose a small document because this is a brand new computer I'm working on right now and it is halting everything it will take a while to render this. Obviously, the larger the size object you're using, the larger the document you're using, the longer it's going to take to render. Now, I'm not really happy with the softness here. I should have taken that up a long way, so I'm just going to make this a lot softer and wait as it rendered because this is a live rendering now. It's going to render every time I make a change to this shape. We could turn that off, but I was just happy, I just knew that I just wanted a softer shadow. So although these bumps don't themselves have dimension on the shape, they look like they have some dimension simply because they were created as dimensional objects using this 3D tool. You'll see my shadow's been cut off a bit here. That's just an occupational hazard of these new 3D tools in Adobe Illustrator. They're not perfect, in fact they're far from perfect, but you can get some really interesting results here. And I do kind of like this bubble on a sphere look that I have been able to achieve. Before we finish up here, I have more Illustrator training at Skillshare.com. When you sign up for Skillshare, you get access to thousands of classes there, including over 250 of mine. In the description below is a Skillshare coupon for you, which is at least as good as the current Skillshare offer, and typically mine will be better. I also have Illustrator training at udemy.com, and there's a referral link for every one of these courses in the description below. Please feel free to share these with family, friends, and co-workers. I hope you've enjoyed this video and learned things about Illustrator of which you were previously unaware. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.